So my name is uh, Kyle Fink. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Neurology uh, here at UC Davis. Um, I also hold joint appointments in our MIND Institute, uh, and my lab is located in our stem cell program and gene therapy center, which is part of our Institute of Regenerative Cures. Uh, and my expertise or what my training has been in is uh, in neuroscience and in developing uh, uh, translational things in neuroscience or doing translational research in neuroscience, um, as well as moving into the field of, of genetic engineering, epigenetic editing, as well as uh, gene therapy. My lab became involved in collaborations here at UC Davis and in a lot of our projects and understanding how we can make targeted changes uh, to genes and how we can alter gene expression. Um, and we started doing this in, in monogenetic uh, disorders and uh, really kind of going through the list of different genes that are interesting from a scientific perspective. And then we really became interested in genes that are on the X chromosome because it, in, uh, it introduces such an interesting epigenetic phenomenon and such an, uh, a novel treatment modality um, because we can go in and make these targeted epigenetic alterations on the female X chromosome uh, as a therapeutic indication. And so kind of from a science per per uh, perspective, MECP2 and Rett syndrome really rose to the top of the list for us in terms of diseases that we were interested in, in studying and, and um, genes that we were interested in. The ultimate goal is, is we are trying to develop a candidate that would be a therapeutic for, for Rett syndrome. And so one of the things that my lab is focused on uh, and how we approach a lot of these different diseases, um, Rett syndrome included, is, is we one, we have to develop cargo. We have to develop the thing that will be the treatment. And so a lot of what our lab does is, is focusing on what, how do we target MECP2 uh, and what do we need to target it with? Um, kind of at the gene and, and the base pair level. What, what do we need to do to be able to turn the gene back on? And that's great. And, and we have collaborators that are working on this and, and we've demonstrated that this may be possible in cells in, in a dish, right? So when we can grow our um, you know, cells that are isolated from uh, the RET girls, we can show that the genes can come back on. But then the second half, and, and both of these things are very challenging, is, is how do you go from a dish to the brain? And, and so delivery ends up being uh, one of the key questions and scientific hurdles that we face. And so um, we've evolved and, and, and humans and almost all species um, have evolved uh, with certain mechanisms to keep things out of the brain. So our brain can uh, function and, and survive and, and hopefully allow us to, to age very healthily in, in a cognitive fashion. Um, and so we have to overcome these hurdles of, of now we need to get things into the brain to hopefully try to uh, restore function of a gene um, that's dysfunctional in, a, in, in Rett syndrome. And so we work a lot with, with different types of delivery modalities, using things like gene therapy uh, to try to access the brain and, and, and get this really cool cargo that's being developed uh, into the brain. We're doing this with, with a great, collaboration, uh, great collaborator, Sean Liu. Uh, in identifying what is the optimal construct that we need to, to, to correct human cells and, and how do we do that in human cells. And then we have another amazing collaborator, Tony Bedelov, who's one of the experts in the animal models of, of Rett syndrome and, and X reactivation. And so being able to work collaboratively means that we have more hands and more brains and more thought processes that we can do things to advance quicker. Some of the great discoveries that Sean is making um, need to be able to be delivered into the great mice that, that Tony has available. Um, and my lab uh, does a lot of specialization in, in uh, AAB manufacturing and, and uh, gene therapy applications. And so we're, we're trying to kind of leverage what we've learned, what Sean's learned, um, and what Tony's telling us uh, to be able to test these in a very efficient pipeline uh, in mice and in, in cells. A lot of what we're proposing to do with epigenetic editors using CRISPR technology I would be first in human. And so, so that means if it's first in human, there's a lot of questions over safety um, and toxicity. And, and the second major challenge is while there has been outstanding advances and, and you know, to use a big word, cures using gene therapy, um, I think there's also a lot of safety concerns. And so, so while AAV works really well to, to get things into cell, it also has kind of some of these contaminant issues of, of toxicities um, and of immune responses. And so I think uh, while gene therapy is 
approved by the FDA, um, there are still significant hurdles of, of, you know, making sure that we get to enough cells in the brain of a person suffering with Rett syndrome. And that if we can do that, um, that the dosages that we would have to use uh, would be safe. Uh, there's still a lot of challenges that have to be addressed. Can we get, can we actually turn the gene back on uh, in the living system like a mouse? And then can we take those results that we see in the mouse and actually translate them forward to larger brains um, and eventually to a clinical trial? They have very broad connections and collaborations and they funded uh, lab projects. They've talked to other groups. And so as we're learning and advancing, um, they're also talking and learning and advancing. And, and they share a lot of that information with us, which really helps shape the direction of the research um, and helps us move along the, in, in very efficient ways. We really understand a lot about Rett syndrome. We understand, um, you know, kind of when treatment windows would be the most effective. We understand, um, you know, some certain uh, levels and thresholds of, of how much MECP2 might be needed to be able to see uh, meaningful clinical impacts. All of these new technologies are, are really converging, um, you know, now that, that we're living in the day and in the era of, of CRISPR engineering. We're living in the era of gene therapies. Um, and I think that, that because the Rett syndrome, uh, you know, patient community uh, has organized so well, um, that there's going to be really, truly meaningful, transformative therapeutics on the horizon. Mm -hmm.